Hey everyone, welcome to Bim Smith's overview of what's new within Revit 2023. My name is Gert and I'll be walking you through some of the most notable new features included in the new release. So let's dive in. The first feature I want to highlight to you is the obvious one. It is the new blue indicators next to the views situated in the project browser. These blue icons indicate if views are active on sheets or not. If they display white, it means that the view is not active on any sheet. If the view display is blue, it, is, it indicates that the view is active on a sheet. To demonstrate this, I'll be going to the site plan. I'm going to drag the from yard view to my drawing sheet and place it on my drawing sheet. As you can see, the icon now turned blue. And if I select it again and delete it, you'll notice that the icon now turned white, which means that the view is no longer active on any sheet. Having to change the work plane in a 3D view just to confirm a measurement is now a thing of the past. All of that can now be achieved with a simple 3D measurement done within the 3D view. To do the 3D measure, all you need to do is go to the Modify tab and select the measurement tool. You can also locate it up in the Quick Access toolbar. Now using this tool, you can now either select endpoints and endpoints to measure, or you can measure heights, thicknesses, you can even do measurements between diagonal sides, let's say for instance from this roof apex to the eave over here. And just want to orbit around to show you that it is actually associating with that plane. And then as well, you can measure between gaps where there is no planes to associate with except edges and points. Now that is then the distance between that roof apex and the corner of that wall. Adding information in a meaningful way onto a drawing sheet can sometimes be a challenging thing. And this is where this new feature comes in quite handy. It is called Swap View. And to activate it, you would need to select a view and then navigate to the new positioning and views panel on the Modify Viewports tab. You will then select the drop down containing all the views within the project. And you will then swap it with a non-active view within the project, meaning that it should not have any detail number or sheet number displayed next to the view, as those are all active views on sheets within the project. So I'll be scrolling up and I'll be selecting my from yard view for this demonstration, just to show you the swap in views. And to change it back, all I need to do is just select the drop down again, select the solar analysis, edit my view name a little bit and then deselect, select it again and shift it back in position. And that is the new swap view feature within Revit 2023. When it comes to scheduling, getting the information displayed on what is relevant to a specific sheet can sometimes be a significant task. Let's take this door schedule for instance. If I were to delete this level two, the schedule will still keep the information related to that level two and not exclude it from the schedule list. Now with a new feature called filter by sheet, we just need to go to the door schedule, select the filter tab, edit, and select the filter by sheet. By doing this, we're just then filtering the information to what is displayed within the active views on the sheet itself. By clicking OK, you'll now notice that there is a significant change within the door schedule. If I were to bring back level two onto my page and place it in view, you will notice that the door schedule now once again increased with the quantity that's been removed. Same goes for if I remove level one, you'll notice that it removes the doors from level one. If I bring it back, it places it back within the view. Also, if I change one of these views to display something else by using the swap view function, selecting the from yard, it will also subtract the information from the schedule. So that is the filter by sheets for schedules. For the next feature, we'll be looking at the pick working plane feature. I believe that this is one of the most requested features within Revit. Now you can select your working planes in a more streamlined approach with a single click pick plane feature that is introduced in this year's release. To set your work planes, you will now go to the work plane panel on the architecture tab 
select the drop down on the set work planes and instead of selecting the set work plane you can now directly select the pick a plane the keyboard shortcut for it as well is pk i'm going to select this and just select this wall over here for reference by turning on the plane i'll notice that i then have a plane distributed to that face now to change the placement of the plane i can then select the pick plane once again and i'm going to select the back wall over here for the plane to be moved to that face and that is the pick plane feature with two new family categories being introduced into the mep discipline managing and scheduling the mechanical and plumbing elements in your project just got more detailed Mechanical and plumbing elements will no longer be joined together under the umbrella of speciality equipment or even something as basic as a generic family. The mechanical equipment and speciality equipment features has now been split into more categories that is function specific related. To locate these two new uh, categories added to Revit, you would need to navigate to the systems tab of your ribbon and then you'll observe them first in the mechanical panel on the tool ribbon which will be the mechanical control devices. This category will host your thermostats or any sensors that you would use within your mechanical project. And lastly, you will find the plumbing equipment under the plumbing and piping categories. And this category will host elements such as water heaters, domestic water pumps, and sewage pumps. Losing information is never a good thing. In previous releases of Revit, when placing information under the demolish phase, things tend to disconnect. Not only did your information disconnect from the system, it also lost vital information related to that system. With this new release, improvements was also made to the maintaining of system information. When system elements are placed under the demolish phase, Not only is there no loss in information in the system, but also no loss has taken place, thus keeping the system intact. The visual style of the elements will still change to indicate that these elements are set to be demolished, and these elements will still hide as per the usual phase cycling. And now something for the family creators. Full regions have now been added to all family creation interface. So no longer you need to import nested families to create your full region details. To create your full regions, all you need to do is navigate to the annotate tab, navigate to the detail panel and select the full regions. Here you'll be able to draw your fulls to any shape and size required and place them in your views. Please take note that full regions cannot be used within 3D views. With this release of Revit, displaying your rebar as solid just got a whole lot easier. You are no longer required to select your rebar and change the visibility status of them. Instead, you would need to go down to the detail level settings and just place it on fine. But please take note that if you want them to be unobscured, you would at least you would first need to select them and unfortunately select the visibility status and place it under unobscured or otherwise they will not display in your model. So selecting them once again, I'll just turn them back on as unobscured and click OK. If you are familiar with the steel construction connection propagate function, let me introduce you to the concrete propagate function. To start off, you need to select the rebar you want to propagate. You'll then select the propagate function and select align by host. Once you've done that, you can then select the host you want to host your rebar in and select the tick mark to propagate your rebar in your project. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Consider hitting that notification bell to keep up to date with the latest from Bimsworth. And if you have any comments, please leave it in the comments box below. Have a good day.